Hey y'all, in this video I'm going to answer a question posed to me directly via email from a viewer named Bill who wants to know if there's a way to cut a tapered hole through a piece of material using vCarve Desktop. And the short answer is yes there is. The long answer is yes there is using the molding toolpath. And that's what I'm going to demonstrate in this video. So let's go ahead and start a new session of Aspire. And even though I'm demonstrating this in Aspire version 10.5, this can be done in vCarve Desktop and vCarve Pro the exact same way I'm going to demonstrate now. In order to carve a tapered hole using the molding toolpath, we'll need to know two out of three dimensions. A tapered hole is going to have a diameter at the surface of the material, and I'll be referring to this as the top hole from here on out, and it's going to have a diameter at the bottom surface of the material where it's cut through the material. And I'll be referring to that as the bottom hole from here on. So let's go ahead and create our vectors. I'm going to create a circle and I'm going to anchor the center point of that circle at my x0, y0, and I'm going to make that circle two inches in diameter. And we'll create that. And this is going to be the bottom hole. This is the outline of the hole at the bottom of the material where the bit's going to cut through. I'll also draw another one since I know the diameter of the circle I want to cut. I'll make that three inches in diameter and I'll create that circle. And now we'll close it. So I know these two dimensions and I can check the difference in this space right here by using my measurement tool. So I'll come over here, click on the measure tool, and I want to measure between two points. And I'll come over here and I'll click right there on my Y zero line. And I'll click right here on the zero Y line. And I'll come up and look at the top and the distance is a half inch. So I'll need to remember that. So I'll close this. And now what I need to do is I need to create the angle of the taper between this point and that point. Well, I know the distance I want it to cover, but right off the top of my head, I don't know that angle. So I'm going to cheat just slightly. I'm going to use some guidelines and draw a straight line vector. So we'll go ahead and we'll pull down a horizontal guide and it doesn't matter where, just someplace up here out of the way. And then I'm going to right click that guide and I want to create a new parallel guide relative to this one. Now, because this is going to be a negative move down towards the bottom in Y, it does need to be a negative position, but I want it to be a half inch. So that will be 0.5. I'll create the new guide. And there is my new guide right there. So I can close this. And now I'm going to pull a vertical guide over here and just place it somewhere out of the way. And I want to do the same thing. I want to create another vertical guide parallel to this one. So I'll right click relative to the guide. Now, because we're moving to the right, in X, this is a positive move. So I will just remove that negative symbol right there and I'll create the new guide. Close it. So now I have a half inch square drawn up here with guideline. So I can come over here to draw line polyline and Smart snap up here to the corner of my guideline and click, 
bring it down and snap down here to this corner of my guide line space bar to finish that line then we'll close it now I can just turn off my guides and there is my angle now just to double check that everything is correct I want to make sure that it's a half inch wide and a half inch tall so we'll select it go to set object size and I have a half inch width in X and a half inch height in Y so it is the correct size so I can close it in a case where I knew for instance the outside diameter and I knew the angle that I wanted to cut I would do it in a similar fashion I know that I want this taper to be 45 degrees so what I would do would be I would bring down a horizontal guideline then knowing that my material in this case is a half an inch thick I would still create another guide relative to this guide negative because again we're coming down this way in Y negative one half inch create a new guide close it and this represents these two guides represent the thickness of my material so I would take my vector and I just start anywhere and click and bring it down and snap it to that 45 degrees and click again spacebar to accept it close it now I can turn off my guides select that vector come up here and I have a width in X of half inch and a height of in Y of one half inch so that tells me if I'm running 45 degrees from here to here this measurement is also going to be a half inch so if this circle is three inch diameter and I'm running a 45 degree angle and I come in a half inch on this side and a half inch on this side that's a total of one inch I can take the diameter of this circle subtract that one inch and I now know my bottom diameter if I knew the bottom diameter but did not know the top diameter I could do the same thing I would know that this gap here would be a half inch this gap here would be a half inch so my bottom diameter plus one inch would give me my outer diameter I hope I didn't just confuse you so since I now know that my inner diameter needs to be two inches I can come over here to create circle and we can create a circle with a diameter of two inches close it and we're all set so that's a way of creating the vectors that we need if we know the inner diameter and outer diameter and just need to figure out an angle or if we know either an outer diameter or an inner diameter and we know the angle but we need to know two of those three dimensions in order to figure out the third one so we have one vector we need to modify in order to use our molding toolpath and I'll demonstrate why right now I have all my vectors they're ready to go let's go over to the toolpath tab now I want to select the drive rail for my molding toolpath first then I want to select the profile that I'm going to project along that drive rail second so with my large circle selected I'll hold down shift and select the profile come over here to the profile toolpath and we see 
that it's projecting that angle, this profile, outwards. So I'll right click on the vector and say reverse direction, and we still have a problem. It's still projecting outwards. Only thing it does is it changed the direction of rotation of the bit. It did not switch these so it project to the inside. The reason for this is complex yet simple. Basically with a closed vector the molding toolpath will always project to the outside. So we need to modify this vector so that it's no longer closed. So we'll select the vector, type N to go into node editing, Come up over the start point here, the green point, right click, cut vector. Then we'll come down here to this point, directly opposite, right click, cut vector. So now we have two separate arcs that make up our circle. Tap the letter N to come out of node editing, and I'll select both halves of this circle. Then I'll select our angled profile, come up to the molding toolpath. Now we do have half of the circle that's being projected inwards. This one is being projected outwards. I'll right click, reverse direction, and now both halves of that circle, that angle is being projected inwards. I need to pay attention to this. I have a start point up here for this half of the circle, and that's fine. I have a start point down here for this half of the circle, and that's fine. I also have a start point up here at the top of my angle, and that's where it needs to be, because we want to taper downwards. We don't want to try to taper back uphill. So if your start point is down here, move the start point up to the top. So we have our drive rails, we have our angle, and now we'll check the tool path position. The cut depth is half of an inch, which is what we want. We don't want any kind of a gap above the tool path. We want that to be zero, and we want no gap below the tool path. We want that to be zero. Our slider's all the way to the top. The tool I'm going to use to taper this is a quarter inch ball nose bit. I don't need a lot of super fine detail in this. It's just a tapered hole. I will have some cleanup sanding to do, but that's typical. For my quarter inch ball nose, my step over is 10%. Now, that's 10% of the tips cutting diameter. So it'll make a pass, move over 10%, make another pass, move over 10%, make another pass. I could reduce this to, let's say, 8%. That would give me a smoother surface finish, but it would also make for longer machining time. Now, that's a trade-off that you'll have to decide. You can either go with longer machining time and less cleanup, or you can go with a shorter machining time and longer cleanup. That's 100% up to you. I'll go ahead and set this to 8%, and we'll go ahead and use that. I'm varying the step over to allow the software to decide how far it needs to step over to make a nice smooth taper. On a simple taper like this, it won't vary much. I am going to use a larger area clearance tool, a quarter inch end mill, and that's going to rough out and hog out most of the material on this taper just to make life easier on my ball nose bit. I'm not going to machine the flat regions. I'm not going to ramp in plunge moves for this demonstration. If I were actually going to go outside and cut this, I would ramp in the plunge moves. I'm going to leave a machining allowance of 30 thousandths, meaning the closest this end mill 
is going to get to the finished taper is thirty thousandths of an inch. I want it to leave some material for the ball nose to clean up so we have a consistent finish. I don't have any sharp corners, and I'm going to use a boundary offset of one half of my ball nose bit's cutting diameter, meaning it's going to move inside at the bottom of the taper about an eighth of an inch. And we'll calculate this tool path. I'm going to go ahead and turn these two tool paths off, close my preview, come back over to my 2D view, and now I want to hog out most of this material here. In fact, I want to hog it all out. So I'm going to create a pocket tool path to do that. So I'll select my inner circle, select a pocket tool path. I want my start depth to be zero, and I want to cut all the way through the material. So I'll highlight whatever value is up here in C, and I'll type Z plus 0 .005, and then tap the equals button on my keyboard, and that gives me my cut depth. I'm going to use a quarter inch end mill. I will use an offset pattern because it's a circle, it's more efficient. Uh, again, if I were actually going to go outside and cut this, I would ramp in my plunge moves, but for this demonstration, I'm not, just to speed up the preview. And we'll go ahead and leave it named Pocket 1, and I'll calculate it. Click OK. Now, strictly speaking, I should have created the Pocket Toolpath first, but I did it in this order. Just continue the flow of my demonstration on the molding toolpath. But I want to run the pocket toolpath first. So with it selected, I'll click my up arrow here and I'll move it up. So this will be pocketed first. So now I'll go ahead and I'll preview that toolpath. And there is our pocketed hole all the way through the material. I'll come down here to the swept profile, which uses the same bit as my pocket, and we'll preview that toolpath. Okay, I don't know if you noticed. I'll go back to a straight Z view. And I will undo last. And I'm going to run this swept profile again, the clearance pass. If you noticed, it came up here to the start point and it cut half the circle. Came back, moved over, and cut it again. Then it continued around and started cutting this half of the circle. Let's watch that again. You kind of have to sneak up on getting an inside cut with closed vectors. This is a demonstration of how that's going to cut after we have done that. So let's go ahead and go back to a straight Z view. Then we'll do our swept profile with the ball nose bit. We'll preview that toolpath. And there we go. There's our finished tapered hole using the molding toolpath in VCarve Desktop and VCarve Pro. Now, as you can see, we zoom in here just a little bit. I have some ridges in here that I'm going to need to sand up, clean up. This is typical using that large of a bit and even 8% step over. Now, again, that's a balancing act that you're going to have to figure out for yourself. If I close my preview here and I go to a toolpath summary, we see that the estimated time for this is just slightly under nine minutes 
not including a tool change that we would have to do for this swept profile. So it's a balancing act. If you can afford to take more time, you can go back into this molding tool path and, oops, wrong one, and edit your ball nose step over to get a smoother finish. But do know that it's going to increase the machining time. And again, if that's okay with you, then by all means, bring it back down. Recalculate. We'll reset the preview. And we'll preview wall toolpath. And there's our finished project. And if I zoom in, that finer step over did give me a better surface finish. So I will have a lot less cleanup to do. Close this. And now we'll check our summary. It also added about three, almost four minutes to the machine time. And if that's acceptable to you, then that's always an option. So, there are many, many ways of accomplishing the same goal, and these are just a few of the options. Now, something to make absolutely certain about, let me go ahead and go back over to my 2D view, and I'll go back into my profile, my molding tool path, rather. Something to watch out for is when you get over here to create your tool path and you have your drive rails and your profile selected, zoom in over here and make sure that the line that's projected runs from the outer diameter to the inner diameter. If it goes over, or doesn't quite reach that inner diameter, the bit is not going to cut beyond that projected line. If it doesn't quite reach this inner diameter, then you'll need to increase the length of your profile. If it goes beyond, you'll need to shorten up the length of your profile. If you remember to create that angle, with these guidelines, the same as the thickness of your material, you'll be right on, just like this. So, now I hear you asking, Mark, what if I don't want it to cut all the way through the material? What if I want this to only cut three-eighths of an inch deep, and I don't want it to go all the way through? I want to leave a bottom in my tapered hole. Well, we'll go back over, and that ha would have to do with these guides here. We still want the same angle. We just don't want it to cut all the way through the material. So, what we'd do is we would delete this guide. We would right-click on this guide here, relative to guide. And we make that 3 eighths of an inch. So in this case, that's 0.375. Create the new guide. Close this. Come up here. Select my vector. Tap N to go into node editing mode and come right down here on this vector where it meets that guide. Right click, insert a point. Then while I'm here, right click. Delete span. We've just shortened up our vector to three eighths of an inch. I'll tap in to come out of node editing. Hide my guides again. Come back over to the toolpath tab. And I'm going to double click my swept profile. And we see here now that it projects down 
that three-eighths of an inch. It's not going to carve beyond this. Okay, we're looking at our toolpath position up here. We have a slight gap above the toolpath, less than half a thou. In this case, it's not going to really make any difference. What's important is our cut depth be 0.375 because we need the vectors to match up in the bottom of our taper. Again, varied step over using a large area clearance tool. There's no changes down here. And we'll recalculate that tool path. And I'll double click my pocket and I'll set that to 0.375. Calculate. Let's go ahead and preview all toolpaths. And there is our finished taper with a bottom still left in it. We have a decent finish out here. And this is ripe for modification. We can V carve down in the bottom of this, use this for a drink holder, use it for whatever. So basically, this is how easy it is to draw a tapered hole, whether you're stopping that taper partway through the material or you're drilling that hole all the way through the material. Either way, it can be done with the molding toolpath in VCarve Desktop and VCarve Pro. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. Now, just as a reminder, this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session right here on my YouTube channel where we can discuss the molding tool path, different strategies for creating a stopped tapered hole like this, or creating a dish or bowl, or anything else you'd like to discuss. Again, that's today at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link down in the description box of this video to that live Q&A session. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And when you hit that subscribe button, click on that little notification bell right next to that subscribe button, and then click it a second time and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch. And y'all take care.